Smart Horological Solutions. In today's 10 minute tech talk, I'm going to show you through the Home Center 3 and how we build block scenes. So we'll jump straight into it. Uh, over on the left hand side, if you come down into your console and jump into settings here, this will bring you to this page and then just click on scenes. So up on the top right hand side here, we're going to click on add scenes. I'm going to try and be very mindful of time here, guys, and, and keep under our, uh, our 10 minutes as best I can. So when we go to add a scene here, we've got a choice of lure scenes and block scenes. Without getting too much into this, this is very, um, I guess, complicated. You've got to learn a programming language to be able to write in Lua. Uh, it certainly has some advantages from being able to do multiple things in one scene. However, there's really not too much we can't do in a block scene or multiples of block scenes that we can do in Lua. So don't be concerned you're missing out. Let's just jump straight into block scenes here. Over on the left-hand side, we're going to put in a name. So let's just call it today's scene. Straight underneath here, you've got allow the scene to restart. Now, what that means is that um, when we have a trigger of a scene, and we'll talk about that in a sec, but basically once a scene starts, do we want to allow it to start again halfway through? So if you imagine a motion sensor, it triggers a light to come on and does a countdown. Do we want that scene to be allowed to restart if there's still motion in the room? Which, yeah, we do. We want it to be able to restart. Most of the time, we want them to be able to restart. On the top right-hand side here, we've got auto. We're going to have auto or manual. If we have it on auto, that means that it's, the, the system is going to be constantly monitoring for these triggers, which you're about to learn about. It's constantly looking for an input or a change in, in scenario or environment. If we were to change that to manual, it won't look for those environments. All it's going to do is give you a scene that you can run by pushing a button in your app, and that's it. Now, sometimes that actually might be handy. So for a garage door, for example, we can create a scene that says open the garage door, and we can drag that across into our phone, or certainly on an iPhone, as a widget. So it makes it a really quick and easy single button to push, and that's the case you would use it in manual. To go down the bottom here, we've got categories. We could put them, if we have got a very big system, we might have 100 scenes in a system. Uh, we could categorize them to make finding them easier. But in this case, yeah, we don't need to. Um, I don't bother about it too much, especially in my own system. Obviously, there's lots of changes all the time in mine, so uh, I just leave them alone. Choose your icon down the bottom here. We'll leave it as the standard one, which is the movie clip thing here. And, uh, and away we go. So we've got today's scene, auto, choose it, lose to, oh, I need to choose a category. Uh, so I'll choose other. So we've got a category. And uh, we'll click on save. So that's created your scene in the system. But it hasn't done anything. It doesn't do anything. Importantly with scenes, we must remember they're very simple in what they do and we can't overcomplicate them. Scenes are made up of triggers, process and outputs. So something happens or changes, be that you push a button, it might be a weather change, it could be a light level change, etc. That's a trigger. So our trigger then starts the system to say, righto, look around and see, do you meet the criteria? Now the criteria is what we're going to create. That criteria then creates our process. So our process is looking at our triggers, and when the trigger happens, we want to do this. This is our do the following up the top here, which we call our outputs. So we've got a trigger, we've got a process, which is between the two, and we have an output. That's what we're creating. So let's just uh, very quickly, let's drag across here. I'm going to say when my kitchen light turns on, I want my uh, backyard lights to turn on. So we're going to grab over here on the right hand side. Please note here and we'll come back to it. These are the different things we can use for a trigger. So we've got device. We're going to drag a single device across into this location. We're going to choose which area it's from. It's in the kitchen. We're going to choose which lights we want. We want the down lights. We're going to choose what we want it to do. So we're looking for the state of the, the light. We want to know whether it's on or off. So the state, when it equals, and you can change that, to, actually not in this case because that device won't let you but when it equals on or off that's what we want so when it equals on it's now a trigger do the following over here if you drag in one device you can just choose one single item in this case we're going to drag a group in and in that group i want to go let's look just for dimmable loads and we'll say dimmer two is what they're called in fabaros anything dimmable We'll scroll down and just find some dimmable loads and let's go, so the backyard lights I spoke about, we'll tick on those. We'll go uh, Trav's light, lounge lights and the island bench. So that's our group. You can see in here we've got them all together. The only difference is in here it's a really quick and easy way to do multiple lights or outputs. A single you can only do one. What do we want to do with that group? Let's just turn them on. Don't worry about setting brightness. We'll just turn them on. I mean if you did want to set brightness you can just go to here, set brightness. 
and then you choose what brightness you want those lights to come onto. Now, if you wanted them all a different brightness, you'd have to do singles one by one and just keep stacking them down here. Just keep bringing them in under one another. So let's leave that at set brightness 52. And there is your first example of a scene. So it's that quick and easy. So we bring in our trigger. So when the kitchen lights turn on, then we set all these guys to 52%. That is a scene in its entirety as it is. Very simple, but that's what it does. Now let's look over here at how these guys work with all of these are true and triggers. So at the moment, if we bring in something else, let's bring in another condition. Actually, what we'll do is we'll bring in some weather. So I'll just explain these. On the right hand side, as our inputs, we have weather. So that's related from an app with wind speed, local weather, humidity, temperature, etc. Basically what you see on the news is what it's going to look at, but it, it does update locally as to what's going on. Uh, here, times of day, so it might be days of the week, days of the month, time range, date range, before sunrise, after sunrise, at exact times. You can choose those, play around with them, see what you need as a time, as a time trigger. We've spoken about devices, is all of the lights, etc. in your house. Um, users, so usually, I don't suggest using GPS locations, not very accurate, unless you want to be a long way away, like half a kilometre away, uh, which is somewhat helpful, but we're working on something at the moment that's going to bring your Mac address from your iPhone, so that, or any phone, so that when you come home and get onto the network, so long as it's a unified network, discuss this with us outside of here, uh, what we can do is trigger that to say that you're home because your mobile phone has entered the Wi-Fi network, so that's going to be really cool and powerful, not far off being ready, I would suggest. Uh, in here, you can have another scene trigger your scene. You can have a notification. We can create notifications from here, and we have our panel here. The important one here is probably variables, alarm. These things are pretty important. Um, variables are really powerful. We're going to do that in another video. So anyway, not to digress, let's go back to devices, and we're going to drag a different... Actually, we're going to do weather. Well. Let's drag weather in, and we're going to say if the wind speed is greater than 30 kilometers an hour. So let's choose our different options down here. We'll go greater than, and we'll go 30 kilometers an hour. So now, all of these are true. So the system is going to be looking, and it's going to say it needs both of these conditions to be true. So the lights need to be on, and it needs to be 30 kilometers an hour or greater, and then it will do the following. However, what's going to start this? At the moment, either of these conditions. So let's say if this light turns on, it will then check this condition as well. But if it's not over 30 kilometers an hour, this doesn't run. However, on the flip side, if the wind gets over 30 kilometers an hour and then it checks this and that light's turned off, again, it won't run this over this side. It just won't happen because it doesn't meet all of these are true. If we just wanted to have one of these guys as a trigger, so let's untick the wind, it would only ever start the scene when that light turns on and then it checks the wind to see if it's over 30 kilometers an hour, and then it will execute. But what we can do is this. Up the top, if we click on this and change this to any of these are true, it's now looking for a different scenario. So we still use this one as a trigger, let's say. So when this light turns on, it only needs one of them to be true, and it will execute. So it executes. But because this guy is not ticked as a trigger, that will never be checked. But if we do tick it as a trigger, if the wind gets above 30 kilometers an hour, it doesn't care what that's doing because any of these are true, run this. If the light turns on, it doesn't care if the wind's above 30 kilometers an hour, just do this. Any of these are true. So that's important to have in there. Now on the right hand side here, right, so we've got all, all, all or any, you know, we can bring into these and we can break apart and start to cascade down with our logic. You know, So if we bring, oh, hang on, I've just clicked on that a bit hard. If we bring this guy down into here, we can create another argument within our argument and we can keep cascading these out. So play around with that and see, stop and put some thought around it because it's really powerful, but a little bit complex. So just be mindful of what's in there, but yeah, you can drag those in. On the right hand side, we're gonna grab this delay guy up the top here and drag a delay in the bottom. And what this means is that so if, it, if any of these are true, so either of these two guys are triggers, so the wind speed gets above 30 kilometers an hour, it's going to set these lights over here to 52%. And then uh, let's go, I'm actually not sure what notifications I've got in here. Let's just see what we have. I'll see if I can find something. Um, we're going to send a user admin in here. Yep. Admin, I'm not sure it's not going to click in, um, and say wind is up. 
in there. And that's it. So what's going to happen? Oh, sorry, in the here with the delay, what we want to do though is we're going to wait five minutes. All right, so how this is now going to run is we have a trigger. Either of these guys are going to trigger. And because any of these are true, it's then going to execute. It's going to set these lights to 52%. It's then going to wait for five minutes. And it's then going to send the admin, anyone who's logged in as admin on the app, it's going to send them a push notification that says wind is up. Simple as that. So guys, without getting too complex on what else these do, I think that should give you the idea of how to write scenes. We've got our trigger. We have a process in the middle, which is your controller doing its work, and we have an output. You can cascade these arguments within each other. We can have any or all of these are true, and we can set time delays on this side. We can have all different types of triggers over here, and we can have use the same ones through here for notifications um, and variables and things as our outputs in the right-hand side uh, in order to do the following. So look, really powerful guys, have a play around with them. You can't wreck them because I'll show you something really important. So it's let's say it's uh, 1.30 in the morning, you've been playing with the scene or not, trying to get it just right. You decide it's time to get to bed because you've got to be up in four hours to go to work. <laughs> we'll just go save over here, click back on scenes. And what's really important is if you've stuffed the whole house up by writing the scene, all you have to do is this little switch here, you just turn that guy off. So if that scene's turned off, it won't run no matter what. And you can come back to it again another night when you've got some more time, get back into it, simply click on edit, and you'll jump back into the same screen and you can start again to modify and change and twist. So guys, I hope that's been really helpful. Block scenes, please sing out if you need any more help. Uh, keep an eye out for future ones. I see the variable one is going to be very powerful. Uh, it'll lead to some great things. So check it out. Uh, not sure if I'm over time. If I am, I apologize, but scenes are a massively important part of your automation. Have fun with them and please sing out if we can help. Good on you guys.